So I get this question asked a lot. Why do I use Blender Octane versus the standard Blender Cycles? In this video, we're going to get into that reason why. But first, I want to let you guys all know I just released a free guide about how to use Blender's materials. I'm just going to walk through some of the basic nodes, the diffuse nodes, the specular node, the metallic node, and just to give you a good general basis of how Octane, the, 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 too much coffee how octane shaders work link will be down in the description below take a look at it now one of the biggest reasons why i decided to switch over to blender octane was because of vfx like i really like my whole passion with blender is doing vfx now octane is industry standard like it it's been in the industry for a very long time and especially in the vfx game right now cycles is not really predominantly used in a big VFX house studios workflow. And mainly just because the way it is to set up render passes, the type of passes that you get, it's just not the best efficient way to do things. Unlike Octane, which like I said, has been in this, has been in the industry for a very long time. The way you can do things in there and the way you can get render passes out is extremely easy. And it, it caters more to a VFX pipeline. So that was one of the main reasons why I decided to start using Blender Octane because of the effect. I'm going to quickly just walk through this little scene here that I just uh, recently worked on. Got this little cube, which is just kind of rolling into the scene. Let me show you guys the full render version. So here is the shot. Basically, I got this little cardboard box just kind of flipping into the scene. Ducky 3D just released it, a video about how to animate a box like that. That got my creative juices flowing and I was like, okay, let's do something with this. And basically what I did was took my camera, threw it on a tripod, and then just animated this little box in here. Again, this is not gonna be an extremely detailed breakdown. I'm gonna work on that in future videos, but I do have some other videos uh, that link down below on the Gumroad, which I break down the whole process from tracking to compositing to the final look start to finish on my gun reel take a look down there below it's not in blender octane it's in blender cycles so you can follow along they're super easy links down below quickly for me again a challenge trying to figure out how to get these render passes out all i did was i take my original shot brought it inside of blender put it into the video editor and exported out the video as frames after i animated my cube and had that all in here what I wanted to do, let me go ahead and fire up the render. This is what we got inside of the camera here. You see, I've got my cube here. And then I do have, if you look on this side here, I have these backgrounds here, these panels. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing an image projection. I'm taking the background footing footage and I am projecting them onto these planes here. But you cannot see them at the moment because the way I have the layers system set up and this is what's really nice about octane in cycles i basically will have to say hey i want this to be a shadow catcher put it in a collection you know go up here and change the settings and make it like indirect only show shadows octane i don't have to do that i just give it an id say hey this gives id 2 this is going to be a shadow catcher this is going to be id 1 i want this to be the actual object that's going to be seen boom simple and done and then you just render out the passes it's very nice so let me quickly break down what I got going here. So if I click on my background layer and if I come into the tab here, I'm going to just quickly show you. You can see here it says render layer one. Then if I click on my cube, now it says render ID number three, right? I'm just giving these things ID. So and then I'm going to go back to my render passes. This is where I tell Octane, hey, I want things to have an ID. So what I do is I come in here, render Octane render layers active layer right now number one if i scroll this and just change this here now you can see what's happening you can see hey there's the background right it's like it's showing up here on the bottom we don't see it because this bottom one is just the shadow catcher and to set up a shadow catcher is extremely easy and you can clearly see here on this ground plane i just have this shadow catcher material and that's again inside of the material layer right here shadow catcher material again i have a free guide links down in the description that i go through a lot of these nodes on just basic shader nodes inside of octane and that's one of the nodes that i also kind of talk about is the shadow catcher i've got that on there that makes it a shadow catcher super easy so what i ended up doing was telling octane hey 
everything that has a one, I don't want it to be visible on one layer. I want to separate it. First, you have to activate your passes because they are not activated by default. So I come in here, check, check this box. Bada bing. Once that box is checked, then I'm going to give my things the layer ID. I gave this anything but one. This is what render layer one is going to be when it renders. All you're going to see is this cube. And the reason why, because I inverted it. So opposite, if I do opposite here, now anything that has a ID of one will be rendered, okay? So what I really wanted to do was just isolate the cube from everything else. So I just invert that and then boom, there's the cube, it's going to be rendered by its own pass. And then if I click into my compositor, the compositor you'll notice is going to activate here. Here I have my image, there's my beauty or basically the cube. And then I have another separate layer, black layered shadows. And that's meaning I'm going to render out my shadow pass. And the way that we have to do that in Octane, there is another special panel. If we come up to here, Octane Render AOVs. This thing here allows me to set up render passes. How I got that render pass inside of the compositor was coming in here. And then if I hit plus on this and then go to here are all my render passes available to me. I can render out an individual pass. And I mean, there are a lot, way more than there are in cycles. I'm talking about like this thing is industry standard, right? So here we go. Render layers, black shadows, layer reflections, layer shadows. I can do white shadows or black shadows, depending on how you want to composite the shadows. Just so many more options. And again, like I have lots of lots of lots of details as far as passes. So in this case, I just wanted a black layered shadow. OK, put that into my AOV, jump back into my compositor and then boom, there is the output, the black layer shadow output. So what I ended up doing from here, I pipe out my shadows into its own file output, meaning it's going to be an open EXR for me, uh, RGBA, and that's going to be its own separate file. It's going to be the shadows and then the image. I pipe that out into its own file output into its own folder that's going to be the cube now the background which is up here i don't need the background because technically the background is separate it's a separate video file that we broke down into image sequences i'm going to recomposite that later matter of fact i'm going to recomposite the whole thing right now to show you guys how easy it is to set something up like